Hi, everybody. I'm Kaori Kriber Sigetomi. Actually, did you notice um, Mangu's presentation? My name was on there. But anyway, I have a good news. I have brought you present. This is a origami, but it's different from a uh, normal origami. They are painted for the cells. This is probably related to my talk. Right. Okay. Let me. Um, so today I would like to talk about how I do origami as a research, and then also how I apply origami in a different field. And there's a, a lot of inspiration and then discoveries. Let me ask you this question. What do you want to do, or what do you want to be when you are a child? So I had a lot of dream, and then I wanted to be an astronaut, because when I was a high school student, Dr. Mori was selected as an officially first astronaut from Hokkaido, and then he went into space. So I saw his picture, like you, swimming around, and I thought this is interesting. But also, he does a lot of research in space. And then I was really interested to do a study about space, and then also interesting for the space structures. This is one of the topics I was doing, and then the field for the deplorable structures. So, um, as you might know, we need to consider how the space structure is opener in the space, and then also how we can pack all the structure in a, such a limited space. Inspiration. So I need to. I decided to learn from the natures. Uh, the deplorable structure is actually in our natures. If you see a leaf. They are really folding compactly in the spring before the spring, and then when, like this, and then when it's warm, it's open up. So you can see this structure is like similar to the we see at the inner space structures. Also, the space. I mean, sorry, this is a bay. Um, nature has also very interesting things. As you can see the picture, the vein is aligned very regularly. So if you if we ca calculate how they fold very nicely and then easy to expand, they have an optimum angle. This is 45 degree. I also learn from how we can deploy. Again, this is from the leaf. If you're living in Hokkaido, you might know. Where I took these photos, and then what is this? This is I took in Ashuro, and this is a famous for a leaf for called Rambuki. It's like really big, and then like a diameter for the leaf is become one and two meters. If you haven't visited Ashuro, please do and see it. And then also, you know, Ashuro has a really nice cheese as well. But anyway, so again, this leaf has a lot of interesting or clever features. The vein is, has a lot of network, and this is really good for the deploy this leaf. But also, they are really efficiently can introduce to nutrition in the leaf. But also, there is an interesting thing: is that the vein has an oval shape. And then I will tell you why is that. Let me see. Let me see. I have brought chopstick. If you wanted to break this chopstick in this side, probably I will not do that. <laughs> but if you do this, probably you can <laughs> break him. But how about if you put in this like a long side? Okay. We can broken this, but if long side, it's quite difficult to broke. So the vein, as I said, this has become an oval shape because it can resist vertical force. 
So the nature hasn't learned from, a, you know, from a books, from other things, but they do like optimize by themselves. So I learn a lot from the natures. So the probe structures, I learned a lot, and then we now apply to the space structure, but also like a, we use this like a deprobable structure to opening the roof, or like a, also apply to the tent. But uh, when I was, um, this is another impression, uh, inspiration. So when I was an undergraduate student, I had a chance to study America, and then do, um, I can take in classes for the medicine. So I thought I wanted to improve some of the medical device. It's like using my knowledge for the mechanical engineering. And then I thought whether I can combine this deployable structure knowledge and then improve for the medical device. Um, before that, I wanted to show one of the photos. This is a picture I attended an international conference. And then I also thinking something interesting. Because I was like a, um, presenting about a, a butterfly birth, so I decided to bring this leaf to the conference. And then I thought this is like different from others. In fact, as you can see in this photo, there's many people come to my posters. And then also a good thing is that I got an offer to do my research in PhD in England to, and then also America. So it's like I decided to go to uh, England to study uh, the proper structure, but also the medical things. And then when I met my supervisor in England, he gave me two words. This is like a stand and then stand glove. This is I never heard of before when I was in Japan. This is a medical device, the stent. If they have a collapsed vessel, the doctor tries to put the, um, the wire, and then they open up. But uh, the stent graft, instead of having this collapsed vessel, they have a weakened vessels. So again, the doctor put in a tube, and then like uh, supporting to weaken the vessels. So I and my professor uh, tried to improve a new type of stent, and then we are like trying to making like or we are trying to thinking about a different kind of structures. And then one of the structure I was thinking about, let me see, is that like this. But as you can see. The point is, the diameter of this structure will not change. So it's become a really small, but the diameter is still quite large. So it's not the suitable for applying for stent. Then I was, at the day, I was like thinking about, again, why not to use origami? And then I tried to do uh, origami like a, many times, but I didn't re expect to do a lot of origami in England. But anyway, one day, something happened. Because of, you know, all Japanese used to do origami a lot. So my hand, my body somehow remember the patterns. Yeah, as I said, just you know, doing this origami many days, and I was thinking like, why I have to do origami in an England. Then one night I remember this pattern called pineapple pattern, and then also cucumber patterns. So if I fold in this, again, I have a, this from this pocket. I have a different. <laughs> This is really good because we can put it in like a small. But anyway, this is the pattern. So we can fold in very small, but once we open, the diameter is become bigger. Oh, a little bit difficult to see. Okay, again, back to this pocket. <laughs> so during my uh, PhD, I 
designed to change in uh, different structure or like introduce in this helical patterns. But also, I made a um, prototype. Like as you see in the middle, this is like made from a really like origami. But the other two, I use stainless steel, which is already used in a medical field. Okay, again, I have. Let me see. This time, probably you can see the up view. I guess I haven't. I cannot see it. If you see it, maybe you can. Okay, okay, that's great. So this is a, a made of um, uh, stainless steel, and then we call this stain, uh, stain graft is origami stain graft. So this is a video. I made a stain graft with a shimmery alloy, and shimmery alloy can remember the shape. <laughs> Yeah, because of the uh, matter of uh, shame and alloy, and then these two, it's imitated to the vessels, and then we heat it to 37 degrees. And this structure to remember the kind of tube, like that is the original shape. So because of 37 degrees, they're back to the original shape. So now you can see they gradually open up. So we can you know, creating this kind of shape using origami. And then finally, I successfully <laughs> finished my PhD after five years, actually. And then I saw that this uh, field of the proposed structure, it's changing to origami. And then also, now it's combined to engineering and then become origami engineer and then widely studied nowadays. Did you see this um, Robert Langer? I know him, but he's a really great scientist, engineer, and then origami. Um, he made a really wonderful origami. During his talk, or at the end of his talk, he said that weird and then surprisingly, uh, may sound weird, origami uh, save uh, someday even life. So now I use making origami and then saving people the life. So now we do further more. We are using cells to making a uh, medical device. So, but how we do origami with the cells? You know, our body is made in a cells and then this become a 3D structure, but we don't know how they produce. That is probably a difficult question. So the cell, it's normally when they culture it, so they're like adhere and then stretching, and they have a, like always compression force. This is called traction force. So I thought we can use this cell traction force and then with, combine with origami, and then also microtechnology, which we can handle in a, such a small size. So normally when we culture the cell, it's become a 2D. Okay. So if we use origami, this is a, just a um, piece of paper. Just by folding. So this is a video from a, a professor in Tokyo, for, um, Tachi. So, become a rabbit. And then this is just a, um, made from one piece of paper, and then just by folding, we can produce a 3D structure. So, advantage for using origami is we can produce 2D to 3D, and then we can create in various shapes. And then now, um, we try to make in a plate which the cell can culture on the plate. Um, using micro technology. And then cell can attach on the top of the plate. And then as I said, a cell is normally like out here and then stretching and then they are kind of ready to kind of detach. So it's like a, now it's like compressing. So because of this traction force, they can fold in like this. And then if we change the shape, 
we can create in the cube shape. So because of really small, so I need to spend a lot of time to watching uh, under the microscope. And this is a video. So there is a skin cell. It's on the top of the microplate, and they are folding. And I know so not only one. We can make a hundred and a thousand all together. So once they made, they are kind of walking around and searching by themselves. But also we can easily change in shape. So this like not for the block, we can make in ball shape, and then we can also punch in them and then pushing them as well. Yeah, pushing them. And then also if we made a strip with a cloth section, we can make in like a tube shape. So, in fact, we can also culture in the cell from our human body, like a vessels. So, we, using this idea, we call cell origami, we can create in artificial vessels. And then, if we use in heart cell, they're beating. So, it's like kind of beating, like self folding cell expand, and then it might be kind of we can make in robots, like walking around inside our body, probably in the future. So this is, I'm uh, trying to make, um, apply for, uh, I'm trying to study or research about an application for this cell origami technique. So we are trying to make in a new type of uh, medical, um, uh, medical device, we don't need to use artificial material anymore. We can use cells. But also, <clears throat> we can make a uh, new drug system. So maybe we can put a drug inside of a structure and then put it in, into the body and then expand. And the drug is like moving around. Right. So um, now our origami is apply many different fields from a space and the medical device, and then now it's a, such a tiny thing for the cells. And then I would like to spend uh, more time to do origami and then apply it for the bio-origami engineer and then aim it to improve medical device. So we can save, uh, origami can save a life. So finally, I would like to tell you, you know, in Japan, we have a lot of wonderful traditional cultures. But if we see this culture in a different view, probably we can get something completely new. Okay, let's try it. Thank you.